Hey, what's going on Dev? Welcome back to Web Dev Made Easy. In today's episode, you will learn from scratch how to build a stopwatch with HTML, CSS and plain JavaScript. In this first part, we build the stopwatches using the face with HTML and CSS. And then we will make the user interface functional using, guess what? JavaScript, the stopwatch will work. Stick until the end of the video because you will improve your dev skills. All right, dev, starting from scratch, we have those three files index.html, style.css, and apple.js. Okay, we want to change the title. Okay, we want to show something more relevant instead of documents. Let's say build a stopwatch. Underneath that, we need a link connect our markup to our CSS. And also a script, okay, pointed to our external JavaScript file, okay? We need this defer, okay, meaning that this is gonna first load the whole page and then our script file. All right, coming into the our markup, okay, let's have our main div. Inside this one, we're gonna have a h1, then we're gonna have a circle with our numbers, okay? and then the buttons the first one here is going to be the h1 and here let's say stopwatch and in the spam because javascript is so special okay so i have a spam with the class gold and let's say java script okay we're gonna give a different color to this one if we go live we see that all we have now is this h1 okay let's create our second HTML element, okay, is gonna be the circle, okay, and inside this one, we're gonna have those numbers, okay, so div with the class of circle, and in here, let's have a spam with the class of time and ID display, we're gonna be using that on JavaScript, okay, and inside this one, let's hard code 0000. zero, 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 zero and now we need some icons okay let's go to this website here ion icons let's copy the script and we have to paste this one close to the closing body tag okay because we need a play pause and reset button okay this is the way of doing this we we have to use that okay if you like this video so far remember to give us a like it helps a lot Thank you so much. And let's continue this one here. Okay. Let's have a div with the class of controls. Okay. And in here, guess what? We're going to have a, our buttons. We're going to put together the play and also the pause. Let me come here and look for play. Okay. Let's just copy this one and paste it in here. As you can see on the left, we have it already. But let's have a class here so you can use that in CSS and also JavaScript. Okay? The markup language is this, just a structure. And you use the class and IDs, then we can control that with JavaScript or style using CSS. This one is going to have the class of play. Okay? as you can guess, is a play button. Okay, and now we need a pause button. Those are together because you're going to be using JavaScript to sometimes show the pause and sometimes the play. Okay, as you can see, you can see both of them right now. Let's also give it a class. Let's give it a class of pause, of course. Okay. Okay, it's done and you can see they are here okay they are together and now let's go to the last one the reset button let me come here to the search bar and let's say reset i found this one let's just copy this and paste it into the button and for the class guess what let's be simple let's say reset okay so now, as you can see on the left, we have the play 
the pause and also the reset button. And the next step is gonna be style of this, okay? All right, next, let's apply the same style to our markup, okay? First, let's start by change the font. We want something a little better, okay? So let's go to the Google Fonts and pick this one, the poppings. And let's now go to the body. Let's change the background color for a bluish color. And as you can see, you cannot read very well here. So let's also change the color of the H1 to white. Okay. Okay, now we should apply the same style to our H1. Okay, let's change the font size to 48 pixels, make it bigger. And yeah, this looks good. And the second thing here, now we're gonna apply that font, okay? The Poppins from Google Fonts. So font family is gonna be Poppins. And in cases of something goes wrong, we have some setup as a fallback plan, all right? The font weight here, we want that to be 200. Of course, you can play with your old numbers. Text align center, we want that to write the center, okay? And another thing here is the line height, okay? We need that to be 59 pixels, almost 60 pixels, okay? Looks good for me. Padding here, let's see, zero, top and bottom, 640 pixels, left and right. And let's also apply a margin of zero, so no margin at all. Now let's deal with our main container, okay? The stopwatch, the one that wraps around everything. And the display here is gonna be grid, okay? Just like content center along the main axis. And we also want a gap in between them. So grid row gap is gonna be 23 pixels. You can feel free to work with your numbers, okay? The width here is going to be 100% and the padding, padding top here is going to be 25 pixels. All right, and now let's give a lot of emphasis to our main word here. What is it? JavaScript, okay? So let's grab the dot .gold, the font weight is going to be 900, as you can see, it's a little bolder. And the color here is gonna be a golden, okay, golden color, all right. And we also want to apply some text shadow, okay. Let's say here zero, 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 uh, zero pixels, white color, damn. And also, after a comma, let's have zero, zero, 50 pixels blur. And let's pick this golden color or yellow color, okay? So as you can see, we have emphasis on the JavaScript name. All right, our idea here is to make everything easy. Okay, so let's go from top to the bottom. Now we grab the time. The first family here, we want that to be some serif and monospace, okay? For the font weight, let's say 300, okay, looks good. And let's make the font size even bigger with 48 pixels, okay? Okay, David, now we have another task. We are gonna create a circle, okay, and put the content in the middle. So let's use the layout flex, just like content along the main axis is gonna be center, okay? And the line height is center, so it's gonna be right in the center of, of our circle, okay? Let's apply a border so you can see, of course, you can see the circle, two pixels, solid, all right. And now let's give the size, all right. Width is gonna be 270 pixels, height 270 pixels. I know what you mean, we have a square. So let's fix that with body radius 50% and now it's still round, okay. We finally have our circle, all right. Next step here, let's go to the font family and in here is going to be sans serif, okay? 
All right, we finished the first element, okay, the H1, then the circle, and now let's go to the controls, okay, the third and the last one. And this one, display flex, all right, the layout, just like on the center along the main axis. And we also need to give it a width of one half eight pixels, okay, one half eight pixels. And yeah, this part is done. Moving to our button, okay. Let's give a the background here is gonna be transparent. We don't want that white. And padding is gonna be zero, no padding at all. Let's also uh, remove any bother with bother none. So we have just the icon and margin also zero. Let's make the bigger with foot size 50 pixels. Okay, change also the color to white so it fits the brush act. And the cursor, we want that to be pointer so it, it makes clear that the user can click on it. Okay, to so make our stopwatch working. All right, down below here, let's have a transition. Okay, of all and dot three seconds, easy. We're gonna apply that for hover and also for change the scale. Now we are gonna apply those effects to those, to those buttons, okay? Button active, so transform. Let's scale them down to 90%, okay? Let me show you. If we click here, yeah they become smaller okay and the second um, effect here is gonna be on hover okay they're gonna change the color to the JavaScript color so button hover let's change just the color here okay the same as the JavaScript and let me show you yeah it's working as you can see we have two effects going on okay the active and also the hover effect okay devs as i told you in the beginning we're gonna have sometimes a play sometimes a pause visible okay so play here is gonna be display block and the pause display none okay this is gonna be change using javascript okay one more thing i need to put all this content in the middle, okay, is much more beautiful. So, margin top 13 realm. We are now in the realm of JavaScript where the magic really happens, okay? Let's start by creating our event listen, okay? So, first of all, let's get a reference to our buttons, okay? Document.query select all, and let's save those buttons in variables this way we can manipulate them okay you can change you can delete you can add new stuff you can do whatever you want okay so this one let's cause pause button okay let's go to the last one document query selector and here let's select the reset okay and let's save that into a variable called reset button okay and now we have all the reference we need once you have a reference to everything here let's use those okay so play button add event list waiting on click and when this click happens we're gonna run the function start and for the pause button add event listen and it's gonna be waiting for a click okay and when the user clicks is gonna run the pause function. The reset reset button is gonna have event listen again on click, and this one is gonna fire up the reset button. It's that simple. And now we wanna declare declare some variables to see our functions below. Okay, so let's start time. Let elapse time equals to zero we're gonna compare that between date now and elapsed time 
and let's time interval okay and now let's run the function okay that's gonna convert the time to hours minutes and seconds and milliseconds function time to string and let's pass in time okay this part here is gonna be quite simple let's see we have one hour is it's gonna be equals time divided by 36 uh, 3 million and 6 thousand uh, milliseconds okay and then we will let hh equals math dot floor and you're gonna starting get the hours minutes and seconds okay there is a link down below so you can download this one it is very repetitive and doesn't make any sense for me to copy this one another very important thing here is we don't want to have just one digit okay we want to have two in order to do that we're gonna use the bad starch okay this one is gonna give us two digits okay two for the minutes two for the seconds and also two for the milliseconds all right but you know nothing here is complicated it's quite simple okay it's not rock science and now we want to switch between the play and the pause button in order to do that let's create this function called show button and let's pass in button k okay and here const button show if button k if play is equals to play button we have the pause button and if the play is equals to pause button let's use the play button and here button to show style display block so you can see it and button to hide style display none so you cannot see it okay so this part is also quite simple and now we are finally ready to create a function to modify our inner HTML. okay let's have here another function okay a simple one let's call that print and let's pass in the xt whatever we want and here as you know let's use the dom okay dot get element by id the display and dot in html and set it to wherever the txt is in the moment okay and this is really the exciting moment okay let's have the function start that we have up there okay so the function start is quite simple all we have to do is let's have the start and set that to equals to date now okay minus elapsed time remember elapsed time is zero okay and time interval let's set an interval here to the function let's use the function here let's call it print print time okay and here elapsed time let's set that equals to date now okay whatever it is right now minus start time start time is zero and date now is always changed because we're gonna have a set interval to one second okay and more than that we want to render that to the pages so print time to string elapsed time and we want to that to do that to every 10 milliseconds okay and for the button here show button pause okay when I pause you should see the button pause now the function pause this one is very very simple okay all we have to do is clear the interval okay clear interval which interval let's set it here time interval and show the button play so you can click on play again and the stopwatch will start working okay and now let's go to the reset function okay this is quite simple also we also need to clear the interval so you stop it for count and we want to print the zero 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 so it goes back to its original position okay and the elapsed time is going to be equals to zero okay and for the button we want to show the play button 
let me show you here okay you click on play and the pause button show up and if you click on this one we clear the interval and show the button play as you can see here okay if i click here on the reset we clear the interval we print the zero 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 okay as you can see here elapsed time is gonna be zero and we have the play button okay dev that's all for this week i really hope you like it if you like it subscribe and just click that little bell down below so you don't miss our weekly video bye bye and i'll see you in the next one